Welcome to the hashtag number one non chilling gaming podcast, you fucking dog cunts. Dumb bitches. Thought he could sneak it in. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. How the fuck are we going? In your head. <laughs> he's, getting that, he's getting that Pepsi glaze on him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hell of a time. Good day, everybody. Welcome to our Friday mini morning gronkin. Over here, it is Easter Friday. So happy Easter, everybody. Hope you all have fuck a great Easter. But guys, we actually have some. Wild and shit to talk about. I had to get everybody on for this, mostly because these two and a little bit of me, but mostly these two kind of started some shit. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, uh, nothing wrong. Marvel Rivals. Okay, that game that was announced yesterday. Mm. Yeah, these yeah. two kind of started some drama with them. <laughs> There's a Discord wow. that you can join when you sign up for the closed beta, and um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we uh, we yeah, Lethal sent me the sent us the link. We saw there was a Discord. Uh, I think Lethal was like, "Yo, these people, there's no real moderation going on here." And we tested the waters, and we found out there really was no boundaries. There really was no fucking Dude, boundaries. Well, I found awesome. the boundaries. Uh, you yeah. still haven't. <laughs> yeah, true. Dream's bad. I'm bad. I got but bad. anyway, everybody, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. We have some other shit in the world of gaming to talk about, but before we do that, full time Moz, hello. Mmm, doing good. I'm doing good. Um, Didn't ask. Don't care. Ah, uh, Fick Williams, how you doing? I'm doing yeah, fantastic. Especially that Mazza wasn't able to speak. That makes me happier. Uh, I like him being silenced. If we could get like a You're dog, a crate, buddy. calm the fuck down. If, if we could, if we could get like a cage for a dog, <laughs> and like one of those cattle prods, like an industrial cattle prod, and just kind of like shock him, pour him with water, and then start shocking him again, I would really love that. I like to say that. And then that brings us to send Luna Snow V picks. Mm, yeah, mate, I'm fucking hyped to be. You know, this four autistic fucks gaggle that we got going on. And I'm, I'm elated because Rob Bartholomew was fired from Creative Assembly. Get fucked. You were ruining the fucking Total War games. And now you're out. Now you're out. What do you mean? He was the glue keeping it together. He was the glue. Mm. Was he Bad actually fuck. fired or did he leave? Um, He has removed his, like, uh, his job title on Creative Assembly, at Creative Assembly. On LinkedIn, meaning he no longer works there. Oh. So, what does this mean for the like? What, what happens from here? You're the creative assembly guy. This this has got to be some fucking. Uh, well, he um, he was in charge of the marketing department, and basically, marketing had a fucking stranglehold of Total War because they didn't have a good competitor. So, how's how how's the only way to make you know? get the sales out there is no longer by making a good game it's by advertising it marketing it well so, mm. and then what would happen is the marketing department under rob bartholomew's fucking direction would come in and, and and fucking dictate on what features and what mechanics can and can't be added whether or not they believed it to be marketable um the game's gone to shit ever since so the fact he's gone is a great news it's whether or not 
Creative Assembly and Sega are going to learn from this mistake and rein in the marketing department, or if they're just going to replace the fucking Hydra. Boom. There. Yeah, there you go. Here's a 27 minutes of autistic detail of why we should all hate Creative Assembly and Creative Assembly YouTubers. Mm, bigly. Yeah, so be sure to check out our boy Naz. On good, good. Uh, well, we get into that because we are going to talk about the Sega stuff as well. Okay, but let's go hi through and say hi to everybody. Triss is here. John's here. Skirmy. What up, Skirmy? Big cat. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is that two? Is that two? Different ones? What? Double big cat. Mm. Hold up. Cell shade. What I don't up, know if I like that. Uh, gravy's here. Salty motherfucking Soros. Hear me out, says Sandra. Video clip of Push Your Bitch premiering at the Gronkies. Free, by the way. Uh, using Mozicon footage of Mozart being pushed down the stairs. Telling a love triangle story between Mozart, Taylor, and Pokey. Mm. <laughs> nice. Uh, Julix here. What up, Julik? Uh, take two getting beer gearbox. Not sure how to feel. Borderlands was pretty fun, but the story was us. I completely agree with everything you just said. I do think Borderlands 3 had the best gameplay of the series, but everything else was fucking trash. Bloody Tina was pretty god awful um bloodbane what up bloodbane valley how we doing valley shocker motherfucking zulu matt w roderick late and gay by one moment no we're not fucking gay fuck we're not late dream is uh julik what julik what are you smoking mars be nice to him i'm not gay what up hosa how we doing uh last toxic male four milk having asses three part-timers one full-timer that's the nice lovely thing. Sit Me Senpai, the mighty D-Day Diable, Sephiroth. Mozza is a full-time cum dumpster for hobos. Mozza, uh, no. Yeah. Mozza, are you a hobosexual? Uh, no. What the fuck does that even mean? It means um, you're like fucking hobos. you like their <laughs> ass stank all up in you. Well, that's uh, Labs, let's talk about how Star Wars Battlefront 4 is back and thriving... Thriving. Mm. What a sad state of affairs we're in. I told you this would happen. I told you. You did. You did this... actually say that. You did. I was like, say that. oh, this one failed. Every card score go back to the fucking dice one. <laughs> G'day, Joe. I see Lucas here as well. All right, let's start now. There's two things I saw kind of just as we were about to start that I'm like, oh, we have to throw these in. Okay. So, granted, this is two days old, but this is the first I'm seeing of it. This is shroud talking about something that happened with dice and battlefield 2042 holy fuck what a waste of time and money hmm. have a listen to this shit it's only a minute clip dude let me just say something before we start this 2042 video oh, they you food, buddy. and paid for maybe 60 to 100 content creators fucking what for their help why okay they did consulting with about you know, a lot of us. It started with like 60 of us or something, and then it narrowed down to 40 and then 20 and then 10 or whatever it was. Did it a few times. They didn't listen to a f thing we said. Yeah. <laughs> what a yeah. That's that's nice. Well, Shooty yeah. food. Yeah, no. Not one thing we said. Not a single one. Not one. Why the f did they pay us? I mean, I got paid. But I couldn't believe it. Like, we know what we're talking about. We play games for a fucking living. That's we don't stop. We just play, 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 play. We have you guys in chat who just echo all of the shit that's bad. We know everything. We are the mastermind. Listen oh, to Oh, shut up. Dude, yeah. it, listening, listening to no the more. pros is what killed Apex. Yeah. So, like... I don't know about this. I like. Look, I like, understand getting the uh, big battlefield people, but at, at the same time, listening to the pros is what killed Apex. So if I'm going from my my experience, it's a community that I mostly know. Sometimes listening to them is the dumbest fucking shit you can do. But at the same time, completely ignoring the fan base and what you paid them uh, is fucking retarded as well. Why would you even pay them if you're not going to take their advice? As well, well so I, yeah. we always talk about how the budgets for these games is completely out of control, especially on these AAA ones and the big ones like Battlefield. So Dice and EA paying for sixty to a hundred people to consult them on what would actually improve the game, and you don't listen to a word they say. 
that that's that's got to be the definition of wasted money. Yeah, yeah. that is. Here's fun. here's the thing. Like, um, I, I think I think consulting fans of a series mm. is if you're not sure what direction you're going in, probably a good idea. But not all advice is fucking good. Built good. equally. There is mm. there is good advice. There is shit advice. I'm sure Shroud properly offered some pretty insightful advice. All right. This is a guy who was a fucking pro CSGO player. Right? Yeah, he plays like every yeah. FPS game ever. And exactly yeah. all of them. Yeah. He is going to be a good person to have advice from. Pokimane, yeah. not so fucking much. <laughs> He's going to be like, can I sell my cookies in an in-game portal to what these do you mean? poor people? She was a Valorant coach. Come on, man. What what other studios have done this? Creative Assembly has done this, where they've asked Fan, haven't they asked creators for uh, input and then ignored it? Yeah, two K yeah. did it with the wrestling games. <laughs> yep. This is something that constantly, this is something that constantly happens with game studios. Mm-hmm. I think part of it is maybe devs are looking for like some confirmation bias. They want they want the to show it to these guys and be like, hey, this looks pretty cool, huh? And then get all those people to start talking like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I saw a little Mark. bit of the next Battlefield game. Who it looks good. That's what they're looking. They're trying to marketing. do it as it's yeah. marketing. It's not actual like our it's not a, research. Yeah, it's, they don't give a fuck what you say. They just want you to talk about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, because, dude, sometimes they fucking fly these cunts like out to their studio and then they're just like, all right, take some footage, do a little cheeky vlog in our studio. Be like, Act look man where with we Star are. Breeze. Yeah, take take some photos. Come on, go next to the big battlefield statue. Take the selfie. Come on, we're cool like that, right? And then they get a photo nothing. with the dude from the Star Wars movies or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have yeah. Warwick Davis on a stool. Go take a photo with him. This is how they pay for marketing for like get paid positive reviews and videos and all that without paying them so then they can like skirt the legality around that and they don't have to have commissioned reviews and and like um yeah basically commission pro- product shilling they they bring them on for consulting and then the youtubers these these big creators and streamers and youtubers are so grateful they just become massive fucking like for it and then that's how they get it. That's how it's done. It's so shilling. Shilling. I think I've said it. I think I've said it before. Payola. It's fucking payola. In the yeah. radio industry, they used to pay to play. What ended up happening? They kept paying, but it wasn't with cash. It was with fucking cocaine. <laughs> that's yeah. what ended up happening. You want to know why everybody listened to Aerosmith in the seventies? Because somebody at fucking Electra was handing radio DJs bags fucking full of coke from Colombia. That's why. It happens all the time, and really, well, it's, it's DICE, only illegal with cash. If DICE was going to be on drugs, it wouldn't be cocaine. It would be on straight-up heroin, because these motherfuckers are asleep at the wheel at every turn, dude. Like, they are sitting at this stage now where they are noticing, there's no way they don't fucking notice that there is actually unfortunately an influx of players to their god awful battlefront game okay yep. why is there an influx of players because the one that everyone was looking forward to crashed and burned okay yeah. so a whole bunch of people said i really want to play a fucking star wars battlefront game so they went to the one that actually works even though it is a piece of shit and they're doing nothing with that they're doing yep. nothing with that they're not being like you know what uh, we're gonna throw uh, in a little bit of money. We're gonna we're gonna fucking get crossplay going. How about that? I was actually I was actually talking to Blabs about this. It surprises the fuck out of me that they haven't done crossplay. How do you, if you see all these fucking players come into your game, the first thing I would do is, oh fuck, we need to fucking do crossplay right fucking now. You know what I mean? Like because the amount of players that are going to all separate ones, and then it, you know, it makes it even easier to find games. I don't understand how it, it, and crossplay, we learned from Epic Games. It's literally just a press of a button. So I don't understand how they haven't done crossplay yet. So, because it's tell nice. These there. are the same people that hired sixty to a hundred fucking contract creators. Doing my best Nazma impression, and did nothing with them. Yeah, it, it, and the thing is, crossplay is one of the most asked for things for that fucking game too. But crossplay like, is at a stage now where it's like it's stock it. standard. Yeah, 
it's like it's 60 not... frames per second in my yeah. opinion yeah <laughs> i agree but hey you want to know what else is retarded <clears throat> twitch so yesterday was the thought apocalypse as we've been decided to call it and mm -hmm. there will be a video on this channel later today edited by the mighty ryan reaper so be sure to check that out but it must be a day that ends with the letter Y because Twitch is doing something retarded. Nah. Nah, so would you please? Safety level up. Starting today, you and your mods have new controls to limit who follows you. Using follower verification, you can require all users or just those with newer accounts to verify their email or phone before following, so. Uh... Dude, one step forward. 10 steps back i swear to god that is twitch's like biggest fucking thing they took one step forward with the thought shit and then 10 steps back with this gay ass shit what the fuck is their problem oh no i'm too good for you buddy you're not allowed to follow me you're you you're a fucking troll what the fuck is wrong with this is some like high elitist gay shit I think yeah. what this is, is their attempt at stopping spam bots yeah but, no nah, we all know how this is gonna play out yeah, like this. No, honestly, at this point, it's fine. But we know what's gonna happen after this. It's gonna be like, oh, yeah. you know, being able to ban specific people by following other channels and stuff. Like that's what that's the end result of this. This itself, not necessarily bad. I don't know about the phone verification, but the email verification to cut down on spam. Because when I was streaming on Twitch, it was fucking bad, mm. and even on even on Kick. You'll just all of a sudden get a follow from a bot, and then they put in the chat that it's like, oh, I think you're great. Message me on Discord. <laughs> like, nobody thinks I'm great. What are you doing lying to me? <laughs> Come on, yeah. bot. You should have said you're mediocre, and then I would have believed you. My yeah, favorite yeah. part My favorite part is the uh, is the text at the bottom. Subscribers, VIPs, and moderators are exempt from the follower verification. So if you pay so money, you can, you, can, you can pay to mm -hmm. get around that. See, it, oh my fuck, man. This is so dumb. It, fuck Twitch, man. They just want to create, like, the biggest echo chambers for these streamers. Like, what's going to end up happening is the streamers are going to abuse the fuck out. Like, someone like Hassan, right? Oh, no, you can't. You're not allowed to say anything different other than my opinion in the chat. So then he's just going to, like, go through it. Like, he's the type of petty motherfucker that will actually make his mods do all this shit. Like, they'll sit down and go through it and be like, no, fuck that guy, fuck that guy, ban, ban. You know, you know what I mean? He's that type of petty shit. So, cunts are gonna abuse the fuck out of it, man. Oh, easy, easy abusive, man. But yeah, Cream, so I think you and me are kind of on the same page where, like, it's not a... The idea behind it's not awful, uh, to stop all the bots and shit, but I mean, we can all figure out what we can do with this pretty easily. And yep. the like execution said, is flawed. The execution is very flawed. And like Moza said, you're just going to create uh, like some crazy echo chamber and elitism and say, like, well, think about, think like Pokemon being like, anyone that follows Gideon, you're not allowed to come over here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's a fucking so bizarre. it's a band aid solution that's monetized. That's the issue, is like, <laughs> Yeah. It, it doesn't really fix the bot issue. I, I wouldn't say the bots no. are still going to come in. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the issue is, is like following pirate software and all that. You, there are behaviors and patterns and methods that you can use to sniff out and ban bots. You don't need an email verification. That's like kind of annoying and cumbersome for users. This is just a means to inconvenience people um, and then get them to pay out to avoid yeah. it and then you could be like oh see but we're doing it for an altruistic reason it's to stop spam bots it's like mm, are you are you, yeah, are you really off. are you really so yesterday as well there was the update to the twitch terms of service okay and what have i told you we may already have a loophole <laughs> let's go baby of course we fucking do man <laughs> say what you will about this individual Say what you will about their whole fucking fottery sphere and all that. But if you are denying that this person and these people are the most innovative people on the internet, you are fooling yourself. <laughs> so the rule change was you cannot have uh, a focus 
on it, right? As opposed to the rest of your body, okay? Yeah. But what happens if it's the only part of your body? Surely that doesn't match. That isn't... What? Oh my god, that actually might be a loophole. This, I swear, she might actually... The fact that she can figure this shit out so quickly and just read through it and go, oh, well, that means I can do this then. Dude, her team, the, the team that she has, and her herself, if she put this much actual effort into not being a thought, she'd be a fucking billionaire. If she put, man, she, this, bitch could, this bitch is smart. She could cure pet cancer, man. If she sat down yeah. and went through it, she could probably figure it out. Because look how easily she can. It took it took less than 24 hours for her to be like, well, if it's, only, if it's the only body part on screen. Technically, it's not like her actually zooming in on it, like the arse thing. So exactly. It's, yeah, it's just there. Yeah, fuck. This, these hoes, man! You try and stop a hoe from hoeing, they're gonna do this shit. You can't stop a hoe from hoeing. It's like, like, it's stop like a hoe from hoeing. Mm, it's like telling a dog easy. not to bark. Let's be honest. <laughs> they are oh, smart, man. God. They are smart. If only they put those brain cells into something else. Dude. Yeah. Oh my fuck. Yeah, she figured it out. Look. I mean, I <laughs> she figured it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Nazma's like, fuck, not sure that we can still no ban the way. bitch. <laughs> no, dude. We're gonna have, that. No, they'll throw something in, like, under the wire to get her banned. No. I, th I no, think at this point, Twitch is going to do that, or they're going to repeal everything no, back dude. again. No, dude, so, I think Dan's sitting there clapping like, this bitch got us. Good. <laughs> this bitch no, actually dude. got us. No, I think, I, again, I still think they're going to repeal this. I think they're going to realize that there's going to be a lot of money lost by this decision. And which in reality, I don't know how much. I mean, if somebody is going to somebody's going to jerk off to that, they'll probably just jerk off to a random woman playing a game, to be honest. There's a lot of sick fucks out there. And uh, so Twitch is still going to profit over, you know, creeps. So that's good oh, for yeah. them, you know. But have a look. Okay. You can You can see her titties there. You can mm. see her pussy. Like, it's all there. It's, yeah, that's why, I, like, I can't remember the exact verbiage that they use, but I'm certain that that still violates the rules. That, also, that clip right there, yeah. Also, yeah, that one. Yeah. what a butterface, am I right? Like, when you pause it on her, she's like, um, <laughs> I have been sent some of her Pornhub videos, and oh, geez. trust me, you can look past the face for what she can do. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a snatch looks like a fucking tarantula mouth or something like that. Oh, yeah. so, you're saying, so you're saying you're going to do a watch through on uh, members only stream? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to verify your emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, the, to me, like, I, I agree with everything, but I am just fascinated. I'm like, wow. Imagine if you took, like, clearly she's smart. Oh, clearly she's you. smart. Yep. She can figure all this shit out so quickly before anyone else within 24 hours. Imagine if she like applied that to something else. Yep. In an alternate her, reality, though? she's a doctor. Is, is it her <laughs> or is it some team that she has? I reckon it's a little bit of team, but still, like, it, she'd have a little bit of like talk in it. You know what I mean? Like, how do I hoe her? You know what I mean? How do I hoe her? Also, this. This uh, new guideline doesn't apply until midnight east. Uh, I believe it's midnight Eastern. So, so, so even if she's violating the the new rules, she's not because they're not in place yet. Okay. Oh, it hasn't ticked over yet. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It's the it ticks over on the 29th. It's the 28th over here. Oh, that oh. Was, it's time. It's time. Mm, okay. Fucking hose. It's Vader. Whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I am an Alinity guy. I am an Alinity, uh, a Valkyrie, a Pokey, and a Nicole guy, okay? So you watch mm, your fucking boy now. Mm, you're a Hassan guy? Yeah, he's a Hassan guy. Does anyone else? No, I'm not, I can't say that. Say it! No. <laughs> say it, pussy! No, I'm not saying it on this stream. Um, anyway. No, I'm you not saying verify it. verify everyone first. Yeah, I gotta, gotta make sure everyone's cool. All right, Moz. We gotta talk, guys. X to fire, X to fire. We gotta talk. 
Yeah, we got it's coming out. out right now. It's coming out. We got we got special deals. Main so mark. A few days ago, up. there was that whole thing that it was it was a paragraph of nothing, and it kind of started a whole chain reaction. It did. And I think that was just the precursor to to this, okay? Because we have a bit of an expose, if you will. Oh my! Intrigue. Behind, behind X defines toxic work culture, crunch, and years of delays. Brace yourselves. Years we're going of delays. Into, we're going to the Ubisoft fucking depths of hell, man. I can't wait I, this this, this to me, and I said this to Mozza. This to me just sounds like oh, skull and bones. Mm, I wouldn't say. I'd say a bit that the the fucking the way they've worded it. Yes, but what we've seen from Exify, what we've seen from uh, Skull and Bones, very different. With, with Mark, at least we have a plan. We know it's actually decent because we've played it. Whereas Skull and Bones, it they didn't have a leader. Clearly, fucking not. I mean, well, hell, I it think... was meant to be a DLC. Um, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put least... it on the Skull and Bones level. I think what Lethal was meaning is the fact that this is just a U how Ubisoft operates. You could yeah. you could take any Ubisoft game from the last couple of years. You could put the next Far Cry. You could put Far Cry Seven in there. You could put Assassin's Creed uh, Code Red or whatever the f fucking Mountain Dew ass name they have for it. You could take any game and put it in there and just switch out. You know the very like just like Mad Libs it. And it would fit. If this is how Ubisoft operates. They're not a great company. No. They're kind of shit. I hate Ubisoft. I'll say it. Oh, yeah. No, Ubisoft's, Ubisoft's fucking garbage. So <laughs> that, that was our biggest fear. Even when me and Lethal were super fucking hyped about it, like just after playing the closed beta, we were like, dude, the only, the massive thing holding this back is Ubisoft. If Mark had gotten the exact same team but under someone else, I'd be way more excited. But Ubisoft's like pearly. Especially for a first-person shooter game, probably my least like Worst favorite. Place fucking... to be yeah, to play like it's just yeah. Following Insider like, Gaming's exclusive report this weekend on absolutely nothing, it took all but twelve months for executive producer Mark Welburn and another disingenuous. We're going in, baby. Another disingenuous tweet from Ax. Now he is an old-school COD player that is also now a game developer on um ubisoft he's also part of a show called the flank which he does with scump as well so that's all going on okay it took uh, that's a, a the one that got fucked over by cod yeah that's like that's the show yep yeah uh to shoot down rumors that x defiance delays aren't relating to chasing call of duty nevertheless ruben did confirm that the game has yet again been delayed <laughs> But it's later today was because of major technical issues related to the game's netcode, which is an issue that has been outlined since November of last year. As previously mentioned, X Defiant has missed dozens of eternal milestones and deadlines these past couple of years. And although Ruben's yeah. latest comments on X Defiant missing the latest release date due to the netcodes are accurate, it's not as simple as a one and done issue that's plagued the game for years. As Insider Gaming has reported, X Defiant's shortcomings stem from several executives and directors on the project. I can absolutely believe that part. Mm. Uh, they are internally referred to the Boys Club by a large majority of the team. Yeah, this sounds like some Ubisoft shit right here, man. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the gayest new wave band ever. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Boys Club's back! Right, at first, the... Boys Club was the name given to a select few individuals who caused constant problems for the game's development, and the term was collectively agreed upon by some members of the team to feel the sense of camaraderie. But a couple of years later, the group has grew to a dozens or so of both male and female individuals. Well, it's not a boys club then, is it? And yeah. it turns, uh, sorry, and its term has evolved to something much more bitter in the studio. The group has been the cause of missed deadlines, crunch, and toxic work environment. And multiple people leaving the project have said sources. While there isn't an exact date on when the club evolved into something more sinister, dude, this X Men plot sounds cool. Mm, uh, Mr. Sinister sources... is part of the Boys Club? Holy mm. shit. Several Damn. sources uh, stated that the change became the most apparent around the time when the Tom Clancy brand was dropped, publicly announced in early 22. Now, I remember this. 
I remember when this game was very first announced and it had the words Tom Clancy in it and it got destroyed going, that name, you're, you are just dick riding off that name, branding to yeah. sell it. And yeah. they had to drop it. They had to drop it. So before the decision, the game was intended to be released in the holiday of 2021 without any significant issues that plague the game today. That change meant more freedom for the project, allowing the boys club to make unnecessary changes which had a domino effect on the progress of the game. Despite the warnings from the team, it's currently added over two years to the game's development. Eventually, things got so bad that X Defiant's toxic work culture, crunch, and internal problems became so prevalent that knowledge of the boys' club even spread to other studios at Ubisoft. Oh, but we're not done. It gets even more fucked. Okay? The issue with the boys' club... Jeez, how many times does it say boys' club? Uh, isn't that the managers or directors are telling club. developers what to do? After all, that's their job. But it's the lack of work ethic, unpleasant behavior, and egos from these individuals that have created a rather unhealthy place to work. One member has no design experience or people experience and has been given directorial powers because of personal friendships. I think they're talking about aches there. Mm -hmm. Uh it means that the developers are left with responsibilities beyond their original job descriptions, told to work tedious hours of overtime to complete tasks, and often shrug aside suggestions that don't align with the views of the higher-ups. Yes, this is awful writing. I'm trying to correct it as I go. Mm. There have been many instances where people have cried, had mental breakdowns. I can't take this shit anymore, man. <laughs> or stopped caring about their well-being because of the toxic oh, environment fostered wings. by the club. The Boys Club is a closed group of protected individuals who think they're better than everyone else and do as they please without any repercussions, said one developer. Oh, but guys, we are not done yet. One member has a history of treating people extremely bad with more HR reports than I've ever seen. I, fre I, I frequently was told the following by management. What do you know? You have never shipped a game before. If you want to make it to where I'm at, then you need to do X, Y, Z thing said a former developer who has since left Ubisoft altogether because of how they were treated. I've heard it's pretty bad over there, but it's everywhere at Ubisoft, to be honest, said another developer. All right, now we're going to get into the net code. But Boys Club, Fick Williams, this is not good, is it? No, no, you should never have a club of boys. <laughs> it's real, real weird. Going to be honest, you're probably on a list with the FBI. You probably have to let people know where you're moving. No, um, I mean, seriously, it's it's not good. Like this this entire game is just I uh, is starting to really feel like it's up shit's creek without a paddle. Uh obviously it was supposed to like again, the Tom Clancy thing. Yeah. What the fuck was that about? Like Tom Clancy's a fucking author. I don't remember his ex defiant book hmm. coming out. Like so so there was that. There was the delay, the delay, the delay, the delay. This game has been delayed so many fucking times, it's starting to turn into skull and bones. That's where I'm getting. We're almost at half a decade. We're getting, we're, we are literally closer to half a decade of this game being delayed than not. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. No. Like, so I get where Moz is coming from. We have played demos and betas and shit that have been public, and it's <laughs> Skull and Bones is just one of the worst examples of gaming to ever happen, okay? Mm -hmm. Whereas this one does seem to have a direction. They do seem to have a plan. They know what they're doing. It just seems, again, like Moza said, Ubisoft yeah. is fundamentally fucked yeah. that it's just sucking any fucking talent that's in the within their development teams and they're just destroying them and yeah. i'm concerned I, I we have oh, yeah. to be concerned i mean when something like and going through ubisoft's history we don't need, again we'll just go back to skull and bones that's probably their most recent game that has a long history of delays and look how that inevitably turned out if this if this wasn't free to play i would wait a week to play it and I was yeah. super excited about the game. You know what I mean? Like, if it wasn't free to play, I, I, I'm not paying not even forty dollars, fifty dollars, right? Australian, yep. by the way. Like, it, like I, I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm not worried because you fucking Ubisoft. What has Ubisoft, Ubisoft done good? I think it's fair <laughs> to say the game is going to come out in a state that's broken. 
Most most games do. It's been delayed so many times. They keep delaying it. Even when they were saying this is a hard deadline, it has to be out in this quarter. And then guess what? Oh, well, it's not out in this quarter. Mm. Like, again, they've missed their deadline so many fucking times. The audience for this game is going to keep dwindling and dwindling the longer they wait. Yeah. You need to get this game out before summer. Like, <laughs> look it. You, if you don't get this game out before summer, your game is never going to hit the heights that it needs to to be profitable, in my opinion. Because yeah. you're the, too close to COD. Yeah, and, and the beta for fucking Treyarch is going to be like coming up soon as well. And since it's Treyarch, I know a lot of people have left Treyarch now, but Treyarch still holds a lot of goodwill in the COD community, right? More than any other company in that COD has. That's the one that everyone's like, okay, this might actually be a decent COD. I don't know if X and can go against it. I really don't. Like, unless they do it. They definitely month. could have competed against this year's or last year's Modern Warfare 3. Yep. But to go up against this year's Treyarch's Black Ops. Yep. You, I don't know about that. Like Moza said, the Black yeah, Ops series and the Treyarch are your, developers are the last bits of goodwill over there. And they do still hold quite a bit of goodwill. Yep. So their choice, they have three choices, right? Either you compete with it and you fail. You release early enough to start establishing yourself as an audience and hope that people choose your free-to-play game over a full-price game. Yeah. Or you wait an entire fucking year yeah. to put the game out. The, the and then you're like also fucking Ubisoft's finances because they're depending on that game being a big live service hit. Yeah, the thing about waiting a whole year is Treyarch's known for being the best updaters, right? You know, they do the best seasons, right? The, the other ones, their seasons are usually shit, whereas Cold War is like season one and season two. They're way better than everyone else. So I don't even think you can wait a year because it's not like other CODs usually with Treyarch where it got, like Modern Warfare 2, it went downhill, right? Because of how shit the updates were. And even Vanguard, the updates were garbage, right? Thing about Treyarch's, the Cold War got better and better. It actually launched where people were like, uh, ah, and then it, the updates, the map, the seasons kept actually bringing the game up. So, Cold War definitely they, had the best yeah, updates. I don't think they can wait a year. I, I, they, I reckon they even lose to a Ubisoft. Season. Ubisoft can't, they need the money now. They've they yes. dropped by almost 200 million dollars from their Q3, Q4. Yeah, the ball is in, in your last core. year, yeah, to this year. They, oh, in one year, their Christmas season, a 200 million euro drop. Yeah, they were in debt. That is, that is fucking insane. That is nuts. And to point to, like, the boys club thing, I fucking hate it that you've got these, like, Gen X boomer dinosaurs who just don't have a fucking clue about the industry anymore. They don't have a fucking clue about the modern the, the modern state of making games and they're just like i know better i sold stuff in 2003 shut the fuck up and listen to me junior and they just won't listen like how how are these on the super nintendo yeah it's how... like when your grandpa's telling you to like install a modern tv and you're like shut up old man you don't yeah. know what you're talking about I anymore used, i used to modify famicoms that i got yeah. from fucking japan it's just incredible to me that these people are still like able to secure positions and make themselves unfireable when 200 million dollars of being are being lost by them <laughs> yeah but you try to tell them you go hey uh these days a on the xbox and x on the playstation is normally the jump button by default these days and they're like no nah, no nah, it's always been on the right side <laughs> so, fuck off. okay so chasing call of duty this is where it gets good so, in our previous report, we reported that X Defiance delay seemed to have stemmed from the never-ending pursuit of chasing Call of Duty, which has resulted in developers becoming increasingly frustrated with the project's lack of progress. There isn't an issue that's caused by the recent delay, but an issue that has plagued the game for years and subject that the boys' club finds sensitive when brought up internally after our past report. It seems publicly too. Nice little jab there. So while it's no question that a new first-person shooter should take inspiration from other popular titles on the market, well, I mean, COD was Medal of Honor, 
Uh, sources who taught sources who spoke to insider gaming said it was becoming evident really quickly that Call of Duty was the only title that leadership was interested in. Sources said that almost every very creative decision for the past two years quickly ended with the same rhetorical question What would Call of Duty do? Uh, Mark Rubin said in his response to the original report, The game remains the same you've played already. Good. Uh, which we have strived to make as fun as possible, and we feel confident about this. Insider Gaming understands that this is true. There haven't been any significant changes to the game since the last public playtest, and almost all of the additional features have been delayed in order to be implemented into the game seasons because of constant, uh, sorry, constant project pushbacks. This includes any form of true progression or challenges, including prestiging and weapon challenges, and other features are being discussed, such as kill camps, kill streaks, fear to mode, competitive mode, private matches, and more. Okay, listen, if there's no progression at launch, holy fucking shit. Dead. DOA. Dead. Well, when Dead. was the when was the beta out that you guys September? Yes, yeah, last September. So mm, like fucking the fact that they that they've said here, going by their word, that there has been nothing majorly changed in the game in the project since the beta in september that tells me as well that maybe mark rubin isn't being truthful when he's like saying oh we you know we've only changed it in what six months it's been more than six months since september hasn't it not september or november something around then uh, uh like that would be anywhere from like eight to five months ago yeah mm. maybe mm. so but half a year half a year Half a year. Let's just Did round it up to half a year or round it down oh, to half a year. You, you didn't do any major changes in half a year. Are it you was, fucking yeah, kidding me? It was the net coding and stuff. So yeah, it's crazy. That's why I wish they were updating a little bit more. Like telling you what they're actually doing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of games have like dev journals. Like dev mm. video journals where they have one guy who's like their marketing guy and he goes in and it's like, Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your boy. I work for Ubisoft. Today we're going to be telling you what we're doing. We added a brand new gun skin. It looks like a fucking alligator or some shit. And it's like, mm. yeah, okay, whatever. But then they'll tell you actual good information. Yeah, like, oh, okay. Today we we had a problem f with the net code for like three months, but we finally updated it. And, you know, now inviting actually works because remember, inviting did not work in September. <laughs> like, it was not working at all when you tried to invite your friend for a little bit there. Um, I don't know, man. This is not, this is not good. This is bad. All right. The, one the more you hear, left. the worse it gets. I, I do understand getting mad about being told that you're like the new accords, though. I, if I was Mark, I'd tell them to give fuck themselves too. I'm like, no, we're like the old ones. I understand where Mark's going from there. Uh, speaking on the boys' club and its pursuit of COD, one source said they will nitpick the feature for liking, similar to COD, uh, and then tell the design production teams uh, to come back later once they make the appropriate changes. Once the team makes those changes, the boys' club will come up with something else and then the process will repeat again for months, all resulting either in the feature finally being implemented into the game or being cut entirely. So another source said the constant changing of approved features or adding new features that don't really affect the game has pushed us back significantly, probably a year or so at this point. To be clear, chasing COD isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's one of the biggest first-person shooters of all time, so it makes sense, but when the features are pushed back constantly or cancelled entirely because they're not COD enough, it has detrimental effect on those working on the project itself. Some developers have even expressed immense frustration over X Defiant's seemingly positive open transparency conversations. That's interesting. It was said these updates don't often align with what's actually going on, including upcoming features that haven't yet been internally discussed or problems that do not exist. That's wild. Um, this part just, here, though, so because Mark is basically enough. just going in announcing shit, and then the devs are looking at it like, what the fuck? Yeah, He's literally man. like pulling what EA did with Anthem, Anthem. just like constantly. Yeah, you need this, too. this is Ooh, fucking wild, man. Honestly, but this part here, but say, I don't get this part because it's not caught enough, but a lot of the things this game was praised for was 
well, I guess you were, people were comparing it more so to the older CODs. What was the conversation around the first public playtest? It was like, wow, this is kind of like Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3. Yeah. Yep. This is Black Ops. Yeah. This is what Black Ops 4 should have been. That's what people were saying. Um, th this was the in between Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 2. This is like futuristic, but not exosuits. It's like the perfect balance of futuristic and hero shooter type of stuff, right? People were even loving it just because. Like it, it was like a better Overwatch in terms of like the hero stuff, right? Um, so yeah, the specialists. Such a yeah. shit show. Uh, yeah, this game's an absolute shit show. Uh, I don't know. Somebody, <laughs> we'll put a, somebody, get a welfare check on Cowman. Dude, Cowman, yeah, Cowman. Oh. Cowman's gonna be like that old dude at the end, like in that scene in Shawshank right now, man. He's gonna be <laughs> carving in Mark Rubin in the fucking thing. <laughs> Oh man, but anyway, while that was going on, Clemson dropped 10 channel memberships. Holy fucking shit. Thank you, fucking Clemson. Lad. They went to Matt W, Berserker Second Fist, Darth Cisco, Liberty Prime, uh, Gal, Brand New Sky, Defarius, Fernando, Sick Lad, and Palazor. Thank you so much, you fucking legend. Appreciate that, motherfucker. Clemson, you champion. All right, let's get some emoji spam going. Thank you. Uh, to me, it sounds like X Defiant's kind of in this weird state where I feel like if they just released it how it was, they'd do it right. No, nah, no. Nah, if they released it how it was, not being able to join each other, it would be dead by now. It would be worse. It'd be almost as bad as like the finals player base, if not worse. I the big know, yeah, that's that's an important thing to fix. But yeah, fuck me, man. Like this Again, is, no one wants to launch a broken game. This game but. shouldn't have taken this long to fucking make. Like, that's the thing. There's no. I. I'm sorry. I don't want to make. Like, I'm not gonna make excuses for these guys. This game was supposed to launch three fucking years ago. Now we're coming up on three once we hit holiday this year. Yeah. If it's you delayed it's that long year. and you still couldn't get last year, two years after the delay. You couldn't get a working fucking invite system. Yeah. Dude, well, it was working and then it broke. Yeah. They oh, well, that's have, good. Um, they, what Ubisoft <laughs> At least needs it to works learn for a while. Is wow. they need to stop fucking um, getting dates and then not pro like crashing. If you if you know like you need way longer, like don't set a date. I I hate when these companies like <laughs> Mark. I think that why people are so frustrated and not really willing to let Mark cook right now is because he keeps giving us dates or, well, not dates, but like, oh, time you know, frames. Yeah, time frames of, oh, it might, you know, second half of net last year. Right? That's worse like, than a date. Out. Yeah. And, and then you're waiting, then you're waiting, then you hear nothing. And then you're, it's like, oh, it got delayed again. And you're like, what the he's fuck? like a fucking, he's a cock teasing developer. He's just coming out here kind of like, dancing a little bit being like "Ooh, it's it's gonna come out within a three month span and then guess what we hit the end of that three month span it's like oh well sorry mm, peep show's over let yeah, me cover what up they, what they need to learn is not to promise a, like a certain time frame they need yeah. to just go we're cooking let us cook um we're sorry that it's taking so much longer but do you guys want a broken game or fucking working one? And so, but the thing is, since they keep going, oh, you know, maybe maybe the second half of this year, it's gonna be great, lads. And then you know they keep promising and not delivering. They just need to shut the fuck up and be like, yo, we're working. We have no fucking idea for a fucking date. Fuck off. <laughs> That's how they should be. I'm sorry. You you can't keep promising dates or the time frames. And then it's like uh, be why your fucking fan base is mad at you because you keep fucking promising time dates, you know? Like fuck People off. People are just Stop gonna think you're a liar. And yeah. and to be honest, you kind of are at that point. You keep telling us it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You're the boy who fucking cried wolf. Yep. It's the mark it's the mark who cried ex defiant launch dates. Yeah. yeah. And we're not get we're not getting it. So no one's gonna give a shit eventually when it does come out. That's the thing. People aren't going to give that much of a shit when we finally do get a set date because we're going to all be looking and being like, well, we'll wait until it del like, honestly, I won't trust the fucking release date until we get a week out from it. Yeah. yeah no, oh, dude, not even then. I'll be like, well, is it release date yet? <laughs> well, it's all, it's all, I did, it, there's no physical, until... no physical copies. They could get away with it's that. It's right there in front of me. Hey, uh, Naz, mm. 
you got to explain what the fuck happened with you yesterday. Well, so we mentioned it a bit earlier in, at the beginning of the stream is uh, Marvel Rivals uh, announced their fucking game uh, to Cream's excitement and applause. Yeah, Cream's can't wait. He uh, and... his pants. He had to change pants halfway through the stream. <laughs> but kind of not the end at all. <laughs> as a joke, but Lethal was like, yeah, let's get in on this fucking alpha. We signed up and then we got a Discord link. And we joined it and we found that there was an, like 40,000 people had joined, 50,000 people had joined. Yeah. But for like 12 hours, there was no moderation. There were two mods online and they were they were asleep at the wheel and we kind of pushed the boundaries a couple of other people started pushing the boundaries and it just got worse and worse and worse and in the end it got so fucking funny that i had to start taking screen caps what? and uh i don't know if so, people want to show. i've got them i've got them uh cream do you want to tell the people some of the things you said um no, I, don't, I, don't I, told, want to say I think i told someone to lick my shitter clean yeah um, <laughs> I said I was pro AIDS and pro late term abortions, and I got banned off the server for that. So yeah, that one got yeah. Yeah. Um, this was one of those discords where the second you join it, you start reading the messages, and you're like, "Oh wow, it's one of those discords." Okay. Yeah, people are saying the most <laughs> fucked up shit. People were just asking for nudes the whole fucking time. Yeah, um, like there yeah. was me and a few people saying, "Can we just get the renders so we can start making the porn?" Because this is just Overwatch <laughs> all over mm. again. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. No, nah, it got pretty nasty very, very quickly. I went in there and I just typed shit like, hey, I hope, I hope this game bears gay people. <laughs> you get, oh, like, my favorite one was you get, like, 20 reactions and shit. You got a lot of you got a lot of pushback for saying Miles Morales is Miles Morales, <laughs> Peter Parker is Spider-Man. As a joke. And they just fucking flipped they over flipped that. Out, of, of all things. Um I don't know if you want to show some of the examples that we got. I have a few screenshots here that you have provided. But first, you have to explain your name as well, just for full context. Luna Snow is the new one of the new Marvel characters. And uh, all of us uh, trolls, hateful, misogynistic, bigoted trolls, decided to rally to her as our big gooner character. We were gooning over her big time. The well, I'm, well I'm you remember how um everyone kind of turned May from Overwatch into a symbol of fuck China? Um, yeah. well, that's kind of what happened in this Discord. Everyone rallied to this character and said, Yeah, that's our Guna. That's and, and, and the thing is, one of the uh, Marvel official like moderators is called Luna Snow Cradle, so that's why that's another reason why it's even more funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but let's go ahead and have a look at some of these, shall we? <clears throat> <laughs> out of the gate out of the gate that was one of the early ones uh yeah. if you would please cream mm, uh do you want me to read the one it's replying to first yeah all of it hey it's i'm like trans Chloe, Chloe says hey i'm trans can we ban the pedophiles talking about weird petty parker please thank you Oh, hey. you gotta explain what was going on with Penny Parker as well, Cream. Yeah, oh, yeah. Parker so that um, was a bit far. We didn't touch that one. We yeah, that one was <laughs> bad. Um, this and person like might said, be right. There, there fun. may have been pedophiles. Honestly, <laughs> I know they're trans, I, but I think they're. It in was the one of those Discord servers. Hell yeah, it was not. Good. That's why I got. I, that's honestly the the one good thing about me getting banned. I'm no longer in a Discord <laughs> server with those creeps. What is the response here? So then the response is, uh, hey, can we ban the trans people in here? I just don't I like, like them. <laughs> and someone put 100% on it. <laughs> that might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the boo boo, my boy. The boo boo this was, was the... This dude was responding to the weird shit I was saying. I went in there and I said, guys, my ball's sweaty and stinky really bad. I want fucking Scarlet Witch to come have a sniff. And he responds saying, can I sniff, dude? Yeah. <laughs> guys, the moo moo is the man, all right? Please <laughs> I... add breastfeeding to the game. Asking yeah. the real questions. The Mark, gaming. you know what you got to do. <sighs> Another, <laughs> <laughs> Another <laughs> the moo moo fucking classic. God, God, I hate my, I God, I hate my stank foreskin. Okay. This, okay. this fucking weirdo was the worst, man. Go on, please. He said, 
He said, when this game comes out, does anyone want to NSFW RP with Venom and Rogue? Need a duo for it. Willing to add a third if they'll play as group. <laughs> he okay. literally, I, when he said oh. this, we were in fucking Discord together. He fucking shut down the server. <laughs> he shut down the chat for like a good two minutes. <laughs> Everyone was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't got a lot of reactions. Shocking. Mm -hmm. uh, great. What's the response? Mm, well, one of them is uh, nah, with a bunch of skulls. Another one's just a skull. Big mommy silkers. Another fucking Chad in there. Can we get Titney Sweeney skin with it as well? <laughs> and Cream Soda Man. Not me. It ain't even out yet, bro. Uh, Go oh, God. <laughs> Big mommy. Mm. Yeah, this one is Penny Parker, our Marvel Rivals Discord kitten. Luna Snow oh. creator right there is an actual fucking creative dev on the fucking... Mm -hmm. The game. They're working on, on the, the game. game. I think they, were just, they were just blind eyes. Blinkers were on the whole time. They were like, hey guys, we're really excited for this. Well, everyone's just like fucking gooning. Everyone's like right responding, up. asking for smart porn in the game. Direct yeah. I'm not joking, the... chat. When I say C cream is right, majority of people were asking for fucking smut and scat and just asking. like they they were not. <laughs> Ooh, we can't wait to tell you more about the game. Yeah, the game's gonna be so fun. fun. Can I get Luna Snow to shit in my mouth and start <laughs> making me chomp it and swallow it down? It's like, they... what the fuck is this? These types of discords never work, man. For this nah. reason, you try and ask, "Oh, what, what would you guys like to see in the game?" And you're gonna get some really <laughs> fucked up shit, man. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, Naz. Yep. So this is in reply to Squid Pickle. Hey, what's up? I'm also part of the creative development team at Marvel Games. This is yeah. super exciting. Uh, Junior Lab BF replies, "Will you guys be making sexy skins for the female characters? Please let me know." Please respond. Well, you know, that's the nicest comment. That that's probably the normalest so one so far. Mm. Were only and then finally, that brings us to, we need Naz to read this one because it's about Luna. Could he make Luna Snow rule 34 per chance, replying to 12th Hour, at one of the devs for the game? <laughs> and then... Uh... Hmm? What you'll also notice is those reacts, like the two blue highlighted ones, Means you've done it, and these were me at my screenshots. So I was like, mm -hmm. "On God, praise God, this shit fire, bro." Now, do you want to explain what happened from here to the Discord server? Uh, so everything else. So basically, the, there's two chats. There's the main chat, and then there's off topic. A main chat. The the devs were trying to do a, a, a live Q and A for the game, right? Like, what what would you be interested in? What rosters? What characters? What what work. gameplay features? No, it didn't work. We fucking we were. <laughs> We were making it so bad that they moved. I noticed that they moved over to the off-topic channel just to reply and do a QA. and a we, we took that shit over. We fucking invaded like Eureka. So there you go. Uh, Marvel's Rivals. Um, yeah, that kind of happened. That was a thing. Mm -hmm. And all three of us have been banned. Mars, Sorry. you got to get banned tonight. Mmm, I'm gonna go in there and ask Luna for a fucking blowy. Mm. Anyway, well, that brings us to this. CD Projekt Red is considering licensing out its Cyberpunk or Witcher IP too. Oh, fuck Mobile my developer. life. Let's Come go, no. baby! This is how we save AAA gaming, by making shit phone games. Fuck oh, no. CD Projekt Red. They can lick my ass. After a Taco Bell fueled diarrhea shit. I don't <laughs> yeah, they fuck them. Fuck the company. I have no faith in them whatsoever at this point if they're gonna fucking make a Witcher phone game. You know what we need to do? This is like get on this Witcher game and flick Jennifer's bean a little bit. Now this that would be a fun game. Play this has game. to be a future tier list for Grog Geek. Worst game company. Because there's so many shit ones, I we have to get, we have to do it. The we answer is pretty out. simple here. The answer is yes. We are considering such a move. In fact, we are we're pursuing through conversation opportunities like that. We have nothing to announce yet, but when the time comes, we would. As for one-off or other business model related to such potential partnership, we would not. 
um, comment on specifics here, but to be honest, uh, plus there is nothing in a place that we're talking about. So yeah, they want to go all in on mobile shit by the sounds yeah, of great. it. Ten right? cent. They'll they'll just license it out well, to ten cent. A couple of years back, they were talking about already making like a Witcher. It might be out by now. They were talking about making a Witcher game for phone already. Um, I, I forget who was actually. I think there was a it. picture of it in the down in the article. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And, yeah, but okay. Mozza, this isn't even the best part. Yeah, listen. Because two thirds of CDPR developers are now working on The Witcher 4, reaching its target staff size. Production set to start in the second half of the year. Witcher 4. No one's really excited anymore, are they? Yeah, no, I dude. can't wait. I I can't wait for that uh, one third of the staff to fix Cyberpunk fully. Well, most of them can't wait for that multiplayer, huh, guys? <laughs> that multiplayer is lit. Dude, it's it's like the 40k uh, brand IP right now is so 40k has been licensing its brand out to mobile games and it's just dog shit after dog shit after dog shit and none of the big games apart from Space Marine 2 have been any good any good the Space Marine 2 and maybe Dark Tide but that died to death let's be honest do you mean like yeah. excitement uh, for Space Marine 2 the exact I mean Space Marine 2 is looking to be a good game yeah yeah uh aside from all its delays and faults uh in development but it is looking to be a good game maybe it isn't but everything else outside of that in the warhammer 40k universe is just fucking spammed on the mobile market and it's dog shit and they've pimped and hoard out warhammer 40k to the point it's just like a hollow fucking gaping hole and I, if they're, they're gonna do that with witcher it's bad i, I just have a question is this development is that 17 developers or 17 teams of developers working on cyberpunk yeah that's what i was going to ask as well because if it's, it's just me. 17 people absolutely fuck this company <laughs> straight Let's up go. fuck okay, you so the paralysis team on the other hand has grown to over 400 developers uh the team working on the witcher spin-off project series led by mollus flood hasn't changed the size development yeah okay so that's people that's not yeah number, yeah, yeah, number of developers 627 so, so you seven, have 17 people trying to scavenge any remains and of cyberpunk and they probably they still have they still they still got to deliver on that multiplayer they promised it at launch they promised no, it i think they launch. got scrap scrapped yeah i'm pretty mm. sure they've come out and said it got scrapped because they're um they're actually working on like Cyberpunk 2, like rumors are now. So yeah. Yeah, well who's game... that must be the eight people over there under other projects. That's great. Which <laughs> yeah. has gotta be <laughs> fucking garbage, dude. CDPR, like when we go through like all like woke companies in gaming, CDPR is the one that is overlooked the most. Menstrual but they're one of the most fucked ones. They're the ones that do that whole um menstrual leave shit. Yeah, and they're giving like awards to people for it. Remember, like you could actually win awards for. for How do you yeah, win an award for fucking having goes a... to Jennifer? Yeah. yeah, fucked up, man. Imagine that, like, oh, hey, lethal, your ball sack still works. Here's a fucking sperm award. This is the company that. Oh, oh Jennifer. I got some for the Gronkies, then. There we go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Um, this is where the meme came from. Uh, oh, you haven't had your period yet because you haven't gone on your leave. You've been fucking bitch. You pregnant? Exactly. That's that, what, what's that meme? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is going to be fucking terrible. But dude, that I know we're supposed to be talking about Witcher, but the fact that there's only 17 people left on Cyberpunk. How many of them are on menstrual leave? Not a good game. Yeah, how many are menstrual leave? <laughs> that could be two people in reality. <laughs> Yeah, uh, chalked, dead ass chalked, and every time this channel does a video about Witcher 4, we always get ratioed. So, just in case we do end up making this a video, you Witcher simps can suck my fucking asshole. Fuck you, Witcher 4 is gonna suck, and you know it. You're living on copium, you retarded, brain dead bitch. How about you lick my shitter clean? I've got no yeah. faith after Cyberpunk because the, the fans have just deluded themselves after the anime. Yep. The anime came out and everyone all oh, the player base in Cyberpunk 2077 has risen like to, you know, fucking a million billion people. And I played it and I'll fucking and put a video. Left. Yeah, I'll put a fucking everyone video. Everyone left because they realized how shit the story is and how shit the side quests are and now the gameplay. Really yeah, the and game how broke. Oh, yep. the, the the bugs I... are fixed. The bugs no. are fixed. Like, Fuck no. Not really. 
Dude, um, okay, so when I played it, um, the fucking last mission, you're meant to just drive through this fucking, like, cutscene, and it just kept driving it. It's, it, it's still buggy as fuck. My favorite part of the game was where your character dies a sad, slow death. <laughs> Anyone else get that cool ending? Mm. Uh, this, so this, this is uh, Nazar's video. Post patch, all the patches and stuff, just before the DLC came out. So it's it's still basically the same game now, right? Without the DLC. And this is a boss, a cyber psycho boss. And this was me just fucking making a joke out of the fucking AI. It's just standing there. I back up. Did you oh. did, did you also find that the shooting was so shit? Like yeah. you could tell that they've never worked with guns before. I just shoot at him, shoot at him, shoot at him. Uncontested, no issue. I back it's up. Not even trying. Yeah. Not trying. Not even trying to chase you down, really. Not running at you and attack you. Yep. So what's the point of him running all the way into that corridor and not just you know having a swing? Mm. It's just. Man, this Back game up. is such a big disappointment. Oh, and then I kill oh, it. That's and then, disgusting. That's a boss. And yeah. then right at the end, settings, gameplay, very hard. Hardest difficulty in the fucking game. That's cyberpunk, people. It's fixed now. Fuck. It's man. fixed, baby. No, but but Nazma, the DLC, buddy, shut your mm. mouth, all right? He's got Idris Elba in it. He's black. Come yeah, on. if I pay an extra thirty bucks, I'll get I'll get good boss fights. Mm. Not even that, you still get shit ones. <laughs> I pay you an extra forty dollars Canadian, and I get some of the stuff that was promised in the original game, and not all of it though. So just not all of it. No, no, no. You what? You want to gonna... like make your We're... customers, you know, happy? Happy? <laughs> you you actually want to do what you said you'd do? Fuck off. Yeah. What are you, a piece things. of shit? Wanting to do what you you promised? No, that's 17. not how this works. We got 17 lads. We're going to hope they give us everything. We got, <laughs> we got 17 developers and 14 of them are women on men's relief. We're, we'll get this fixed soon, I promise. That's what they must have done. They must have put all the women on Cyberpunk so they can really focus up on Witcher 4. Dude, no, no. Didn't Witcher 4 only start now? Because... There's rumors of it even not even being um what's nah, it's name? starting later this year. A Geralt, right? There's like rumors it's gonna be like a spin-off, right? Yeah, um, I think it would be better. I don't know. On one hand, it's like you kind of need Geralt, but on the other yeah. hand, it's like I think it, it's in a good spot to just leave him. It and there's the more and there's the worry ruin, of like exactly you, you know, need him to sell the game, but also if you use them, you'll ruin them. Yeah. Yep. It's like that movie it. Creed just destroys the character of Apollo Creed in the first two fucking minutes. It's like, can we can we not do that with Geralt? <laughs> yeah, he was a good dad, man. He liked reading the fan mail. That's what I remember from Rocky too. Mm -hmm. All right, motherfuckers. Next, yeesh. Take two is acquiring Borderlands Maker Gearbox former Embracer for. 460 million. Take two will acquire Borderlands, Tiny Tina, Duke Nukem, and more. Well, Tiny Tina is Borderlands, right? But on top of that, 2K confirmed that the next Borderlands game is in active development. Now, before the stream started, you went and had a little look at some Embracer sales numbers. I did. I did. So I looked at what their how much money they bought uh Gearbox for back in April of 2021 when they bought it. So they've only owned Gearbox for literally just under three years. So that means really the only game that came out under them was Tiny Tina. And that was already before they, that was developed before they acquired it. So they have literally not fully developed one single fucking game from gear yep. from Gearbox from when they bought it to now selling it. They're selling it for $460 million, right? That's a good bit of money. The only problem is they bought it for $1.3 billion. They've, they've literally lost almost a billion dollars on this deal. Mm. Like, I, yeah. I, under, I, I read it before as like $1.1 billion. It's $1.3. That math is like almost... That's like what 800 and something million dollars that they've lost on this deal 
Mm. If my math is uh, round, round about correct, that's not good. This, that's that is fucking horrific. How bad is Gearbox in a state that you're willing to lose almost a billion dollars just to get it off your fucking books? But what does that mean for Borderlands Four, though? Well, here's the thing: like, uh, Take Two has been the publisher for it under Two K. Um, they're gonna put it under the Two K brand again, so possibly not much. No, I don't yeah, know how much is actually gonna change. Yeah, because they, they've, they've just kind of got it back. The one thing I will say is Take Two is going to be in a really good financial place next year. Because Take Two owns 2K, they own Rockstar. GTA 6 is going to be a fucking hit. Doesn't matter if the game's good or not. It's going to be oh, a yeah, hit. Yeah, that, that's a guarantee. So they are not in a place financially where they're too worried about Borderlands being a hit. So Borderlands may actually get a little bit more time to cook. And that's that's the one benefit now. But also, what happens if they just cook up shit? Yeah. Yes. We, we want a good Borderlands game. We, like, Borderlands... A good Borderlands game right now would be fucking fantastic. It would be so good. Uh, especially the, after the fall of Destiny. You know, there isn't really a good looter shooter right now that's out. So, like, Sean, the number isn't thousand it's million yeah it's it's 850 million but yeah even that would better, be about how much better. yeah you just replace the k with an m and yeah that what is a fucking it's disaster that is man All i right, said i said mm -hmm. uh i think what was it a month uh i think it was on one of my streams i said that embracer was going to get rid of gearbox in the next two years and i didn't realize it was going to be in the next two fucking months but this is interesting timing. I mean, I'm pretty sure no one's looking forward to that movie because it looks awful, yep. right? Mm. But you would think with the movie coming out, you might want to hold on to it for a little bit longer just to see if it makes the value go up. Well, mm. they would have gotten... Unless they know, unless they're looking at... Unless they're like everyone else looking at the movie, watching the trailer, mm. being like, oh, that's terrible. I think they've <laughs> already seen... Well, one, they would have already seen the... Because they own the IP, they would have already seen what the film is. And yeah. so they probably saw the film and was like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> we can't have we can't have this on our books if this fails three failures in a row, mm. or really for them two failures in a row, but for the franchise three if you count Borderlands three, which was before they were acquired. This is bad. Like Embracer is straight up just they're gonna. Wow. I think they're just in the a liquidation sale at this point." They're trying to get all these game companies off their books, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if like THQ Nordic gets dealt somewhere or Deep Silver gets dealt somewhere in the next couple months. Because we've had now Saber buy themselves yeah. out. We've seen all that. Like this is not this is really not good. <laughs> so do you think we're on the stage of seeing more of these studios going back to be more independent? Because that could be a good thing in the long run. Mm. Yeah, THQ Nordic could do it. That could be really good in the long run. They'll be able to, like, you know, not have Fuck, to worry um, so much about this, like, corporate bullshit. The people that make uh, making Space Marine, they just bought themselves. Yeah, Saber, yeah. 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 Fucking hell. But I really want a new Borderlands game to be fucking good. Like, like Moza said, I just have this itch for a fucking Borderlands game. I, yep. liked, I like Borderlands, I do. Three was... Mm. Borderlands 2 is the GOAT, uh, but mm. 3 had the best gameplay. Everything else just was terrible around it, yep. especially the story. Yep. But come on, man. Like a Borderlands, it just seems such like an easy win to get a good Borderlands game out there and it'll it'll take care of itself, man. I mean, they can keep yep. updating it until the end of fucking time, really. But mm -hmm. add yeah. some cool new bosses, DLCs. Add fucking... new characters like Borderlands, like they always add new characters and shit, man. So there's so yep. much you could do, but I guess. What this comes down to, though, in terms of just Borderlands, putting Embracer and 2K in a side for now, though, is... So, Craig, you reckon this is going to give them more time to cook the game, but this doesn't I, really reflect if it'll be good or bad? Yeah, well, because, uh, I mean, if you still have the people who made Borderlands 3 at that studio, and the same people who made Tiny Tina's, 
what's more time going to give them? The problem with Borderlands 3 wasn't the any gameplay, any technical thing. It was the story. So you're just yeah. going to give those people more time to fuck up the story. The benefit is you're probably not going to get a lot of crunch. So the game may actually feel pretty good. It may be like mm -hmm. a, a Borderlands 3 where it feels good, the story's bad. Yeah, like again, Tiny... Take, even... take 2, they don't need anything to come out. They literally, all they have to do is release a basketball game, a wrestling game, GTA 6. That's it. That's yeah, all yeah. they need to release this year. Everything else, that company needs to just sit back and and wait. Do because I think I don't yeah. even think GTA 6 is coming out this year. Next year, though. Next year, yep. Their stock price took a giant jump just on that teaser trailer. Yep. Their entire company really is beholden to sports games and GTA. Yeah, and, and the sports games, they can. It's just a repeat of last year's. Maybe even take out some stuff. Like they do yeah. less and less work on those, and they just seem to be growing and growing somehow. No, no, they added a season pass, so now you got loot boxes and a season pass. It's pretty nifty. No, let's go, baby. Really, the worst of both worlds. Mm. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, even Tiny Tina's Wonder Woman, like the story was garbage, uh, but the gameplay was fucking pretty good, right? That's. Yeah, it's, it's still the same though. That's the, that was the last one, and it's fucked. Like they've got the gameplay down from Borderlands Three and Tiny Tina, right? It's just they need to get the fucking writing better. That's what they yeah, need better yeah. writers. Well, boys and girls, we have one last thing to go over. We have an indie to show, and we have our first ever Gronk Squad stream coming up later. We'll we'll talk about that in a little bit. But Naz, this one's for you, my boy. Oh. Sega hit with wave of layoffs that impacts several studios. This came out 24 hours after that whole union thing went down with Sega. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to get them out now before you can't. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> Look at the smile on his face. He's so happy. It was revealed today that Sega is preparing to make mass layoffs that will impact as many as 240 employees at the range of studios. Now, I know this is actually kind of like good for you, Naz, because this is kind of draining the swamp. But what do we have here? More industry layoffs. It's yes. almost like there's too many fucking idiots in this bloated ass industry We've charging too much for their games that are too expensive to make that no one fucking likes. I think we've broken last year now. I, we we've got to be to. close. We are, we're, we're either close. a couple hundred off or we've broken it already. At the top of the table uh, sits the likes of Sega Europe, Create. Oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Creative Assembly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fuck them. And Hardlight. This news comes as confirmation is handed down that Relic Entertainment, known primarily for Company of Heroes, has secured an external investor and will become an independent oh. red studio, moving out of the umbrella of Sega's umbrella. Get okay. Wrecked. All right, I, I like that. I like a Company of Heroes is a is a decent series. So thanks to IGN, the world has seen uh, the world has seen an email sent to its employees by uh, by Sega by Jürgen yeah. Post as part of the le Jürgen leadership at Sega Europe. Uh, Nazma, would you be so kind? I want to sincerely apologize for the worry and understandable distress this news will cause, particularly for those directly affected. These decisions have been incredibly tough to make and they follow meticulous consideration and deliberation with leadership teams across the business. Change is necessary to secure the future of our games business and to ensure that we are well placed to deliver the best possible experiences to our players going forward. We need to streamline, focus on what we are good at and position ourselves as best as we can for the road ahead. In order to do that, we need to respond to the changing economic economic landscape and the challenges we're facing in the way to develop our products and bring them to the market okay so that's obviously right corporate you know corporate jar jargon that's bullshit here's the major point the largest investment of something like a hundred million maybe more was placed into the hands of creative assembly to make the hyenas game and creative assembly fucked it up they fucked it up completely. They to the point where they got to an alpha and they never even released the game. They cancelled it. 
Sega came in and went, what the fuck is this? And they canceled it. That's their largest investment in a game ever. I, like, Man. that's going to fuck, fuck them up royally on the business side of things. So this is, I think Hyenas is the catalyst as to why this is happening. Hmm. Oh, well, we got a little bit more. Go on. It's the same message that has been relayed by countless developers, publishers, and all manner of industry organizations over the last year or so. Since the start of 2023, almost 20,000 industry workers have been laid off around the world for a multitude of reasons, but most of them all boil down to a need to streamline operations. What have we been saying? Sega has promised to support and any employees impacted by these layoffs and that severance packages, career support options, and guidance services will be made available. No, they're not. They're not for the Creative Assembly. They've been leaking mass massively to uh, YouTube of Voland, and they, they're just they're shit out of luck. They, they're just getting their letter, and they're like, bye-bye. Um, Post said, I fully appreciate this means we are moving into a very unsettled phase, and I ask that we look after each after each other throughout this difficult time. Other Sega studios and subsidiaries outside of Sega Europe, Hardlight, and Creative Assembly weren't mentioned in the most recent update. But what's his name was uh, fired, or well, has Rob removed it from Bartholomew. Yeah. So Sounds one of the guys, character from Game of Thrones. One of the guys that deserved to be fucking canned was canned. So that's a good thing. At there least. you go. There you go. Hey, so what? What? Just on the Creative Assembly aside, where do you think they go from here? Or who the fuck knows? At this They're stage? making it. They're making a 40k game. Um, it's all but confirmed. They haven't made any statements yet, but you heard it here first, Gronkies, uh, Gronkers. Um, they're making a 40k game because the emails that were leaked to Voland mentioned a guy involved in Project Juno. And Voland went digging and digging and digging and asking people. And he's like, what, what is this Project Juno? And they, they eventually were just like, it's 40k. Because Warhammer... Fantasy Total War was their best seller. Um, it's not a good game, but obviously Warhammer fans will just buy whatever's given in front of them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, there you go. A little insider exclusive. Mm. My sources. All right. Um, okay. Before we show off our indie, we do have a little bit of shilling to do. Hey, you guys love shilling, right? Mm. Mm. Hashtag number one shilling podcast. In the game. <laughs> In about two-ish hours or so, we will be doing our first ever live stream over on the Gronk Squad channel. And yes, this stream will raid into it. Um, I'm going to be hosting. We're going to be playing Monster Hunter, obviously. Moz is going to join. Fick Williams should be able to join. Uh, yeah, I'm going to grind the fuck out of it until then. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll try. I'll yeah. boot up the game after and see where we're at so you can join. And um, I don't know, I'll probably throw out the link to D-Day or some shit so we can join in as well. Should be a lot of fun. It's going to be our first ever stream over on the Gronk Squad channel, man. We're all going to be there fucking shit up. All right, mm -hmm. now, after that, though, we got to show off an indie, and holy fuck, I think I found... I found a game to appeal to people like Cream, okay? It's called Master Theft TVs. Yeah, there we go. I didn't know I was black. Hold up. Uh, take the role of a thief with an unusual fate in a totalitarian country. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I love it. This looks like shit. <laughs> it's England. Might actually be. Mm. Oh shit! It's just Northern Ireland. Fuck <laughs> the IRA. <laughs> Holy shit! Promote <laughs> ye black and tan. Oh, classic 2D. Mm. Oh crap! What does that do with stealing? I thought this game was just about stealing TVs. Ah, oh, mate. Oh, there he's it got is. The TV. No, he's done it. He's done it. He's got the TV. Oh wow, this is kind of neat, actually. Fuck. He's done it. Oh shit! Who is he stealing TV from, man? What the fuck? <laughs> Apparently the IRA. <laughs> they really love their TVs, man. Shit. <laughs> he needs so many TVs. Where does he sell them? 
<laughs> All these things I need to know. And he's got a little shop. It's $3 right dollars Australian. Oh, enjoy, everyone. <laughs> mm, let's go, baby. Well, there's the link to it. Okay, that was... Uh... Yeah. That's Cancer. wild. That's wild. <laughs> All right, motherfuckers. Um, Fick Williams, Cream. Thank you all yeah. for being here. Anything you want to shill on, on our way out? Yeah, my YouTube channel. We're 10 away from 100 subscribers. Yo! Yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy shit. When we get a new video, bitch. Ooh. Um, well, I'll probably start writing it next week, and the new video will be on Paradox Interaction. <clears throat> kind of the uh, same side or a different side of the same coin as Creative Assembly. Um, and I don't think a lot of people are really addressing the problems with Paradox, at least in the YouTube space. You know what I mean? We're all looking at it. We're all looking at it. Definitely a game where you see how Moz's dad puts food on the table. Um, extra act- dumb, shut your whore mouth. No, I usually suck dick to put food on the dick dick table. So you can actually, have a good Christmas, you fucking whore. Actually, that's not true. Uh, Moss's dad abandoned him. Do you want to tell the story of how your father abandoned you, or should he I just, tell it? He just left. <laughs> well, you know how Mars, most dads say, hey, I'm going out for a pack of cigarettes and then just never come back? Yeah. That's called, not what happened. His dad called Mars a cunt and then just walked away. He just walked out. No, nah, he just stood up, looked at Mozart and said, I am now abandoning you, and then left. Mm, he just left. And um, mm. Sipme I seems don't... to be railing Mozart's dad a lot. Mm, yeah, that's where he went. went. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Thank you, actually. <laughs> I mean, Mozart, you should start stealing TVs. Hell's oh, fucking well, then. <laughs> Elden Ring stream later. We'll see how we go after Monster Hunter. Uh, we did like six and a half hours of Elden Ring yesterday. Part time, man. Part time. Crazy, crazy. Part-time. But we got it. We definitely have the Gronk Squad stream, so that's going to be really good fun. Um, Moz, sad bitch. Your turn. Mm, I'm almost at uh 350. I'm actually at 340 subs on the old YouTube. That'd be fucking wild if we could have 350. I'm working on a video right now. It's taking a little bit longer because I want to find some more comments. I didn't hit as many comments as I wanted for a video of um what people are saying, but we're working on it. It looks it, it could be fun. I think. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been streaming there a lot more because I dual stream on YouTube and Kick now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunar feet picks. Mm. Wait, what do you reckon Snow Luna's feet smell like? Oh, shit. Like a fresh meadow. Um, <laughs> yeah, or horse shit. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in terms of maybe maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I'm going to do a test stream, not Tarkov, not, uh, nothing online. I'm probably going to try out a a bot game that's similar to um, AC Sex, but came out before it. I've been wanting to shill that game. It looks really promising. Yeah. And the developer gave me a free Steam code for oh, DLC. Oh, that's good. When I, oh, when it I sounds like it. you're getting wine to dine there now. Yeah, I am. I'm part of the shill club. I'm just like Shroud, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, baby. All right. But yes, on that note, again, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, there will be a video on the channel in like, I don't know, 45 minutes or an hour. I want to thank you all for your support. It's very humbling. Appreciate you all. Get cream to 100 subs on YouTube. Mm. And on that note, we're all going to go run a train on Lunar Snow. Bye. Yeah, I'm ready, boys. Let's go. Cool. Let's